Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another unusual discovery of a very strange galaxy that doesn't really currently make a lot of sense. A galaxy that's sort of similar to this famous galaxy known as NGC 1052, that's by all definitions of what a galaxy should be, doesn't even look like one. Because normally we might expect something like this, or something similar to what you see right here. This is the iconic M82, also known as the Exploding Galaxy. Although naturally, the shape itself can be a little bit different. And the modern definition and classification of various galaxies puts them into three different categories. We have the elliptical galaxies, the ones that are somewhat more spherical in shape. We have the spiral galaxies, like the Milky Way, where all of us are currently located. And then we have the irregular galaxies, similar to the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud, that very likely became irregular because of various interactions with its neighbors. But they still share quite a lot of things in common. For example, normally there is some kind of a central black hole, very often millions or even billions of solar masses in size. There's also lots of different types of gas and quite a lot of hydrogen gas, very often in orbit around a central point. And on top of all of this, a lot of different global clusters and of course individual stars that then allow us to see these galaxies with optical telescopes. But the modern theories also suggest that there is also quite a lot of invisible dark matter, in most cases representing most of the mass. Although that's more of a contentious point, because some scientists are trying to explain the observations using alternative theories. But for the most part, as of today, dark matter as a kind of an invisible particle a particle made up of something that's very difficult to detect is still the best possible explanation. Especially because of all of the discoveries from particle physics in the last few years. As you might discover from some of the videos in the description, the scientists have been able to create so many different subatomic particles that even today still don't really make sense. Which means that the dark matter right now is still best explained by some kind of an invisible particle, especially because of all of the observations from around the universe. But more importantly, it seems to represent the majority of mass in most of the visible galaxies in pretty much most galaxies we are aware of. And that's of course including the Milky Way, with only a minor part of stuff being visible and creating various stars. But there's always been this one challenge with the dark matter theory, the challenge that up until recently was very difficult to resolve. It's known as the dwarf galaxy problem. And it's a problem that was created by a lot of supercomputer simulations. So in a nutshell, it kind of goes like this. Based on a lot of different computer simulations, they were able to recreate quite a lot of galactic clusters similar to where we live as well. But there was always one problem. Despite having a relatively similar number of large galaxies, so basically galaxies like the Milky Way, would always end up having a lot of smaller galaxies, dwarf galaxies, in excess of what was originally predicted. And so even in a neighborhood of the Milky Way galaxy, in the region referred to as the local group, just over 50 have been discovered so far, but the simulations predicted approximately 500, which already created a bit of a challenge and which basically was kind of difficult to explain at first. Now one potential explanation was that, well maybe dwarf galaxies get destroyed pretty quickly and get absorbed by larger galaxies, and it did make sense. But a more intriguing explanation started to be proposed and discovered in just the last 7 years or so. And it was really with discoveries of these very, very difficult to find galaxies, ultra diffuse galaxies, UDG for short. And the most famous of them is probably this one right here, Dragonfly 44. The galaxy discovered in 2016 that presented a huge mystery and a lot of problems. It seemed to contain practically no stars on the inside, but potentially a lot of mass with some scientists even suggesting that it was actually similar in mass to the Milky Way. Now eventually the mass was recalculated and this turned out to be very likely just a very large dwarf galaxy. And so just like so many other recently discovered UDGs or ultra diffuse galaxies, there was just something that was not adding up with this one either. And unlike a typical galaxy, like the spiral galaxy you see right here, they all shared very similar features. It was almost impossible to see them in optical light. There were very very few stars. Yet whatever was here was orbiting as if there was quite a lot of mass. And so they became known as the dark galaxies, sometimes referred to as the dark matter galaxies, but for the most part known as UDGs. Although eventually the scientists realized that there were also a completely opposite type of a UDG that didn't just have a few stars in them, but also did not contain a lot of dark matter either. So there was a mystery inside a mystery. But by itself, this provided a very intriguing explanation to why we're not actually seeing that many dwarf galaxies in the vicinity of the Milky Way. We're literally just not seeing them, with most of them just being kind of hidden. I know that this idea might sound kind of far-fetched, 
In the last few years, the scientists have discovered a few of these relatively difficult to see UDGs right here in our neighborhood. With the recently discovered Antlia 2 galaxy we've discussed in one of the previous videos, which should be somewhere in the description, essentially being the most recent such galaxy discovered here. It's apparently just as large as the Large Magellanic Cloud in terms of size, suggesting of course that it mostly contains something that's invisible, very likely dark matter. And quite a few recent studies, including the ones you can find in the description, go through quite a lot of other potential candidates that have still not been confirmed, suggesting that in reality the local group of galaxies could actually contain hundreds if not thousands of different dwarf galaxies that are just kind of difficult to see which to some extent solves one of the major problems for dark matter theories. Or for theories of dark matter that involve some kind of a particle. But all of this so far has been sort of hypothetical. The more recent discovery coming out of the Chinese Fast Telescope is a lot more definitive and is way way more exciting. It actually provides even more proof for the existence of dark matter, once again as a particle, but more importantly finds another really really unusual type of galaxies. All of this coming from the paper once again in the description below. And this time it's a dwarf galaxy located approximately 94 million light years away from us, currently named FAST J0139 plus 4328. And unfortunately right now these are the only images we have. And actually more realistically are the only images we might have for quite a while. Because once again it's practically invisible. It produces almost no optical light whatsoever and by all parameters seems to be defined as what's known as a dark galaxy. Although not entirely dark. It does seem to produce just a little bit of light, but observations from mid-infrared and ultraviolet show nothing. Only observations from the optical light and from near-infrared reveal that there is something there. It means that it seems to contain a lot of much smaller stars producing just a little bit of light and nothing that's powerful enough to produce any UV light. These are most likely red dwarfs, very similar to Proxima Centauri near us. But more importantly, this is the first observation of what's known as an isolated dark galaxy. It doesn't seem to have anything around it. And those other bright objects you see in this image, those are actually stars in our own galaxy much much closer. But it definitely seems to meet that definition of dark galaxy, completely by itself, practically invisible, and very likely mostly containing dark matter and quite a lot of gas. And that's basically how the scientists were even able to find it. Even though it's kind of far away, 94 million light years away from us, by using the world's biggest radio telescope, the China's 500 meter aperture spherical telescope, they were able to detect radio waves coming from hydrogen gas which seem to be circulating and orbiting a central point. Which is actually exactly what they were trying to find. They were trying to find hydrogen gas orbiting invisible points somewhere out there in the universe. And the large clouds of neutral atomic hydrogen orbiting a central point could not be anything else. As a matter of fact, it was orbiting in a disk shape, implying that this is essentially an invisible spiral galaxy, or a dark spiral. And the only way they were able to confirm that this is a galaxy was through additional observations in the UV and infrared light. With additional calculations discovering that there's maybe about a total of 700,000 solar masses in terms of visible stars and around 80 million solar masses in terms of hydrogen but about 5 billion solar masses in terms of everything else, or basically very likely dark matter. Implying that whatever is here seems to contain about 98% dark matter, with almost 2% being hydrogen gas and a very tiny fraction being visible stars. Which is actually kind of reminiscent of Dragonfly 44, the other really really massive galaxy containing practically no stars. However, because it has so much gas orbiting around the central point, it's also possible that this is just a galaxy that's still trying to form and is essentially in its early formation stages. And because it's sort of isolated from everything else, it does to some extent make sense. Maybe it's just evolving really slow compared to galaxies that usually have a lot of galaxies around them that allow for quicker growth and for a lot more collisions. Either way, no matter what this UDG is, it's still a really exciting discovery just as exciting as a lot of other galaxies discovered in the past. Which means that we're definitely going to be coming back and talking more about this once we have more information. Maybe the James Webb Telescope can help us here a little bit in the future. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.